Hey, on this episode of the Speedster Build, we're talking exhaust. All right, so here's what I've got going on so far. Uh, Charlie has an exhaust manifold that was built for this uh, Rajo, but it's got some clearance issues. The issues are the fact that this <laughs> exhaust header interferes with that new firewall and it, and it really interfered with every firewall that it's ever had on there. I'm gonna go ahead and modify this manifold. So we're gonna get rid of this bend. And we're also gonna shorten up this cause it actually hits, uh, might be interfering. We're gonna end, uh, put a 90 degree bend here cause we need clearance between the firewall and this is just, uh, this just doesn't give it to us. Uh, one of the goals that Charlie was hoping for was to have a stock exhaust system basically from the header back. Uh, and to do that, what I've done is I've mocked up a Wilmo manifold just sitting there and uh, got it partially threaded on to the exhaust. Then I've got the exhaust tacked into place uh, on the manifold. So when I pull that exhaust manifold off, it's gonna leave the header pipe in the stock location. So there's the header pipe. This is where it's gonna exit in its stock location. We've got some things that we're working around. Uh, the intake, the intake on the radio is a single port that is distributed, the, the intake runner is basically distributed inside the head. Uh, so we have to manipulate the manifold in a way that this exhaust will come by and uh, basically not interfere with where the carburetor is. Uh, I've got two different ways we can do that. All right, so I've got some mandrel bend two inch exhaust pipe. I can do a couple of different things. So one of them would be to mount, I'll get this fuel line out of the way, would be to mount the exhaust in such a manner that basically uh, it would do this motion. So up and around, it would exit out, down, and then we could plumb back in. But that's, that's a lot of exhaust that's just hanging there unsupported. My thought is that we would do something more or less along this line. So it's going to exit out of the header come down and we will feed into that stock, a head pipe basically. Okay, so the first thing we need is clearance between the firewall and the exhaust header. So when this exhaust header is bolted up, it just flat does not fit. I mean, we're off by six inches because of that. <clears throat> so this is the same left to right. And what we've got here, this is a lot closer. And I thought, well, maybe I could just flip the thing around. Well, I still have an interference issue. You can see that the bolt holes don't line up. Basically I have to shorten both ends or I just shorten one end is what I've ultimately decided on doing. Um, well, I can even shorten up both ends for that matter because I could put, I'm, I'm kind of just brainstorming this as I go because I really haven't thought of, do I want to do this easily or do I want to do this cleanly or shh. I don't know yet. <laughs> so the clean way, so let's just, let's just brainstorm this. So the clean way would be to cut both ends of the exhaust manifold off. So I don't have that blunt. And I've got a couple of those uh, mandrel bends, as I said. So I've got two of these, two sets of these mandrel bends. I could take the front exhaust runner and put a nice 90 degree smooth bend in it. And I could do the same for the rear one. And then at that point I could then plumb which we're, we're kind of in luck. So the end of this original header is threaded to the Ford. Uh, yeah, it's basically threaded to the uh, Ford pack nut thread pitch. So um, I can then adapt that threaded end onto whatever exhaust I'm, I'm doing or whatever outlet I'm doing. And I'm thinking what I will end up doing is basically plumbing from, so what I can do is I can end up taking the exhaust instead of it coming out the back of the manifold, I'll basically have it coming out here in the middle of the manifold. So I can take both of these guys and I can put nice clean bends from this 90 to here and same with the back and have both ends curving around. That'd make the manifold look really, really clean. It would also add a lot of work for me because as you can see, uh, there's a god awful amount of welding going on on those manifold flanges. 
Uh, the other option would be to find another, uh, basically a, another manifold flange and uh, redo that. But um, I just don't feel like that is time well spent. I think I can fix a lot of the problems quite easily. So I know for sure that this end has to come off. So I'm gonna use the and basically start cutting. guy is off okay there we go the manifold now fits with the firewall so now we're gonna have to basically build uh, well we'll start by just doing this we'll clean this up and then um, we'll worry about how we're gonna fit to there yeah I forgot to add the carburetor on there just to kind of show you how much room that we don't have to work with here um, so it gets pretty stinking tight and I, I'm convinced now after looking at it that, you know, basically doing something, something along these lines is going to be, it's going to be better than coming all the way around the front and up and over uh, because this manifold from the factory is not supported by anything other than where it attaches at the, um, at the manifold where the exhaust pipe attaches at the manifold and where the exhaust basically touches and attaches down at the back of the frame so on the factory ford uh, exhaust systems it's very common to have the back of the exhaust manifold over time droop because the exhaust is of course getting very hot and it uh, has no support so that whole exhaust header tailpipe assembly hangs off the back of the manifold and we just don't want any more stress on this exhaust than we have to so uh, having all this coming off the front, I think is just a really bad idea. And it, it makes more heat inside the engine compartment uh, as that exhaust travels through that pipe that's not really needed. So um, we'll continue on this route and see um, how clean we can make it. Okay, so I need to grind this weld off, which is not anything I am looking forward to at all. But luckily, I've got a Gigantic grinder somewhere around here. Yeah, there's me. <laughs> Luckily, I've got a big, huge grinder, and uh, it'll hopefully make short work of all this. something along those lines went ahead and I cut one of the two 90 degree U's in half and now I need to just fit that to this guy and uh, this radius is actually a bit tighter than what the distance is here which I'm sure those of you that have built exhaust you know all about radiuses and distances because whoop, you can see that we've got a little bit of an elevation change there. Tell the truth, this is the first exhaust manifold I've ever built. So uh, I'm just gonna kind of uh, eyeball it here. Uh, I'll make a, make a mark with, with my awl. And we'll go get to cutting. Okay, so we'll go test fit this piece. Yes, we are definitely long. So we will measure the, so we're gonna go ahead and measure the distance there that we need to cut this back. But uh, it's looking pretty, pretty good. I think it's gonna look really nice and clean. So as you can see, I've got the 90 now kind of just roughed in there. Uh, now I need to just tack it into place and uh, clean up all the welds and make sure everything fits.
All right, tacked in place. Uh, that looks pretty dang good. That clears up any issues we had with the clearance. And uh, it looks, I, I have to admit, that looks so good. So uh, I'll go ahead and continue, just we'll weld that all up. So we will work on going from here down to there. That's ultimately the end goal is to hook that manifold up to the header. All right, with this portion of the manifold completed, it's now time to basically just put the puzzle pieces together. So, um, puzzle pieces. All right, here's the manifold and we're pretty much ready to start moving forward. So I know that I need to make this, this basically end up going like, like that. So this is essentially the shape we're looking for, which is something something to the effect of, of this. So we've got to build this bend and then we have to build another bend in between here and there. And it looks kind of weird. What I'll end up doing just to support this probably a bit is I will have a bracket that'll come off of this, off of this uh, mounting flange and probably support this threaded piece once it's all done because we don't need this hanging unsupported from, uh, you know, from the exhaust manifold. So that's what we're shooting for, this shape to here. So we got some, uh, we got some building to do. This is the two shapes that I've come up with. <laughs> as funny as they are, I've got the uh, line marked where they intersect each other. And then this part here will weld right onto that threaded end. So let's go ahead and get this thing tacked into place. So you can see there's the exhaust uh, flange with the thread part into it. And then this guy here is gonna attach something like that. So pretty tight, pretty clean, and it'll give me plenty of room there to, uh, looks like to attach a bracket to support this exhaust flange is gonna come down. So I'm pretty happy about that. Here's my threaded piece and I've got a marker mark that lines up with this marker mark. So I can go ahead and just tack that now and uh, get that, th uh, that threaded portion tacked onto this manifold. Downpipe. Okay, three tacks should be plenty. And I'm also, I should also add, so there's this guy tacked into place, threaded schnoz, it's gonna bolt up like that. So I've got marks on the exhaust manifold uh, that will line up with, and you can see I've got it notched out. So I need to basically trace out on the exhaust uh, where this is gonna mount and uh, finish trimming it all up and tack it into place. I've got this down pipe, here's the manifold, and it is going to attach to it something like this. Um, I've gone ahead and I've, you can see on here, you can see on here that it's not level even at all because I have to cut around all of the curves and the compound angles that are going on here. So it will fit fairly snugly up against everything. I've still got some more fitting to do, but I'm going to go ahead and tack this in place. Then I'm going to go ahead and dry fit it to the, uh, to the block again. And just make sure everything lines up before I send everything home. places. I don't think that's going anywhere. And that's, that's kind of what the exhaust is going to look like. I mean, I've seen uglier, but it's, I think it looks pretty good. So that's the fitment in there. That's what we're looking at. And it ain't half bad. Okay, everything, the manifold uh, fits, doesn't interfere with anything. The 
Uh, header pipe fits, doesn't interfere. Well, sort of, kind of. So the header pipe, this thing can actually be rotated in about an inch. I will just break these welds, spin this thing around so it pivots this direction, goes that way, and then uh, trace it, mark it, cut out the hole, and then uh, tack it and see where we sit. Well, this is the part that I don't like uh, because it requires a lot of uh, use of this guy. These die grinders, if you've never used a die grinder before, they throw little splinters everywhere. Everywhere. All right, well, uh, I've got the hole cut in this thing. As you can see, huge gaping hole. And this guy is ready to be tacked on. Okay. So I will have to, uh, I've got a little bit of a gaping hole there on the so I need to mark, make a little bit more of a cutout for that, which isn't that big of a deal. It will go really quick. But look at that. That is money. There she is all done up. Uh, you know, most of the time you do do this stuff with like a, a TIG so you can get really beautiful welds. I don't have a TIG, so I have to make it all. So it kind of ends up looking like, uh, but anyway, we won't get into the, how pretty it is. Cause so there's exhaust all painted, ground down, ready to go. And uh, you can see that it hooks right up with the stock header pipe. Goes right down there. Looks pretty, pretty dang clean, sharp, good. Um, yeah, I'm quite pleased with how that turned out. All right, well, that pretty much wraps it up. If you have any questions in regard to this build or any other Model T type questions, feel free to comment down below. And while you're at it, give this video a like and a subscribe because the more you like it, the more it, uh, YouTube lets other people see it and uh, it can help someone else down the line. So I appreciate that. You guys have a good one and we'll catch you on the next video. Take it easy. Not drafts. Wow, that's still hot. Oh, shnikes. That's still hot from grinding on it. Really hot from grinding on it. Woo! All right, that'll have to make the uh, the bloopers. Brooke, that was for you.